Good evening. Welcome to Cinema Hits and Misses. I'm Dawn. And I'm Ryan. And I'm John. And we're here live on WMPG 90.9 from 8 to 8.30 tonight. And you want to give us a call and join the conversation at 780-4909. That's 780-4909. What are the movies tonight, guys? Tonight we'll be talking about Ghost in the Shell. And The Zookeeper's Wife. And which one are we going to kick it off with? I guess we'll start off with The Zookeeper's Wife. Warsaw, Poland, 1939. For Antonia Zabinska, she lives, she's living in heaven at the zoo that her and her husband take care of. If there's one thing that is clear, Antonina cares for the animals deeply, especially when she's able to save a, be- a newborn elephant when it's found not breathing. That haven only lasts for a moment as Hitler's army, Hitler's army forces force their way into Warsaw, including an air raid that destroys the zoo. With the escaped animals captured or killed, the Nazis use the zoo as a base of operations. Antonina and her husband, John, are helpless as they watch their Jewish friends get taken into the ghetto created by the Nazis. The couple decides to take action and use their home to house Jews that are sneaked out of the ghetto. It's a difficult task, especially with Hitler's appointed zoologist Lutz Heck always around. How long will they be able to keep their operation running before they get discovered? Now, this film, is the the film Zookeeper's Wife, is directed by Nikki Caro. It stars Jessica Chastain, Daniel Bruhl, John Heldenberg... My, Michael Mc, McAl, McCalton? So. Yeah, and Ido Goldberg. It is just barely fresh, uh, 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 79% of audiences liked it. What do you think, Don? Well, it's... I think it's a noble effort. I I like films by Nikki Caro. I mean, she did The Whale Rider. She did North Country. She did McFarlane USA. Okay. So she's she's got a way to build some character and relationships. I don't know if this is going to have the depth of other um, World War II type movies dealing with the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think... Between the book and what they're trying to do with the movie here, they're trying to show a different perspective through people and animals of what probably kind of reminiscent of the Jewish Holocaust, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, the the devastation and destruction and just horrific, yeah, horrific times that these people live through. <coughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's a, a like you said, a noble attempt. I I, I don't know. I kind of like sat through this movie. I, I, I felt like the biggest issue, it didn't feel like it had any focus. I don't know if the rest of you feel that way. Like, it it, it kind of had, like, this thing where, you know, it just follows uh, Antonina, played by Jessica Chastain, and it's, like, at points. But then it, like, cuts back to her husband in, in the ghetto as, like, he's trying to sneak uh, any, any Jews out. And I thought, actually, I found those scenes a bit more compelling in comparison to, like, when we were back at the house especially when she's just pretty much interacting with Daniel Brule the whole time. And it's just like, you know, Daniel Brule's like, oh, I'm actually in love with you, you see? And then <laughs> and then there's, like, this forced, like, jealousy plot that they kind of, like, put in there with, like, her and her husband and, the, and Daniel Brule's character. And I'm just, like, shaking my head as this is happening. I'm like, of course they're going to throw this in here, you know? To build some tension. I mean, yeah. It's... Yeah, I think with, with the, the jealousy thing... It did seem forced because she could have talked to her husband when that happened because there's definitely the focus. There's definitely two stories going on. You have her husband getting the Jews out of the the ghetto and you have her playing the front of the zoo because the Nazis have taken over her zoo as just a kind of a, not a fortress, but like a, a camp where they stay. So she has to keep the front and he has to you know go underneath it i think for the kids especially uh do you have the name of the young girl i don't uh shira has she was amazing Mm -hmm. um ursula yeah she was really really good um and i think she definitely her character was um like the eyes i guess of um, or gave the the Jews um, as a whole kind of a, a, a character for the audience to really relate to because during the movie there'd be Jews who were staying who would get out and then so it was always like a 
constant stream of people coming in, coming out, but her and some of the other family members, they kind of stayed. But since she was by herself when we were introduced by her, we're definitely pulled in more to her, and I felt more for her than Jessica Jastain because, yeah, I... Because it is based on a true story. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think with the romantic stuff with Steve Brule, Dave, Daniel Daniel Brule, Brule. um, I... Don, did you read the book? Have you... I didn't read the book. Okay. Um, so um, I, I know that it was based on their diaries. Okay. Yeah. And I, I didn't read whether or not if that, there was that the character romantic... was there. But... Okay. Because that one definitely felt more of a, rom- not romanticized, but like a dramatic, um, added more drama to the story. Um, so that definitely, it took me out of like... I know it's not like a documentary, but it took me out of the more historical section of the movie where it's just like, oh, now I'm in this romantic affair, not quote unquote affair movie. Um, so that kind of pulled me out. But I mean, it, was, it was, like you said, in, in what John said, it was a very noble attempt to make. Yeah. There was a movie probably 15 or so years ago called Shining Through which was Michael Douglas and Melanie Griffith and Liam Neeson, which which dealt with spies going behind the lines, mm-hmm. which in this, for that romantic yep. triangle, yeah. bit, that reminded me of that other movie. So here in The Zookeeper's Wife, that it was a tension that could have been added, that was probably added to the original story. I think there was... A character Some, that yeah, was a zookeeper, and of course that zookeeper here is really on the eugenic side, yep. wanting to create the perfect animal and bring resurrect. So yeah. mm-hmm. there are so many of those Nazi themes in there, you know, being best friend with Herman Goering, and so p- plucking enough of those tones of Nazi Germany, mm-hmm. but probably not the depth that we have seen in other yeah. World War two movies. Yeah, And if you're just tuning in here on Cinema Hits and Misses, we've got John Ryan and Don talking about The Zookeeper's Wife, if you've seen that, or our next movie, Ghost in the Machine. Ghost in the Ghost Shell. Shell. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you give us a call at 780-4909. That's 780-4909. I mean, I think if people are looking at other Holocaust... If you're comparing this with other Holocaust movies, mm-hmm. let's say a Schindler's List, it's yep. not going to have that much gravitas to no. it. Um, Schindler had a deeper impact mm-hmm. but the fact i mean this is a pretty astounding story for this couple oh yeah I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, we're, we're, we're trying not to knock like the actual story it's incredible they yeah, saved yeah. 300 people it's which the is... execution i think mm. more uh more than the story as a whole yeah i mean for this this couple who founded and kept a a zoo mm-hmm. and you're very it was one of the pride of warsaw Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still open. Still open. Yeah. Um, for for what they accomplished was just amazing. Mm-hmm. For how the story was told, probably not as amazing. I mean, another thing is they jump through time, and yeah. this is shown by when they change a child. Actor. Oh my god! And yeah, I was so confused. I didn't know who that kid was. Yeah, that totally threw me <laughs> like when they're like, when the kid's like, "Look, Mama!" Like it's not, and I'm like. Wait, who's that? You're not the same kid that yeah. we started this movie with. This kid looks so much. I'm like, oh, we jumped. It wasn't like, Cleopatra. The, but, it wasn't Cleopatra bad. But he kept the mole in the nose. Yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Even, I I just got. I was just so That's like. That's the only reason. Yeah. I did. As because, soon yeah. as as soon as they brought like the older child, like when the child got older, that totally threw me off. And, and it wasn't and then his, that big of a shift too. Yeah, and and even like his scenes, I felt re- really unnecessary. And like dumb kid does dumb things, and I'm like, of course this is gonna happen. Like there, there's just like things like that that kind of made me groan because I'm like, there's something here, and I feel like they could have, I feel like they could have done more. They like, I, I thought like it was gonna be more about like you know Jessica Chastain's character like trying to connect with these people, and obviously you know like I said, there's 300 people that they saved, so they came and went. But it would have been interesting to see like, you know, trying to make connections there, and that would have I think would have made it a little bit more compelling. I, I don't, I don't know this. Yeah, this thing I, just. And the, oh, and the other thing, um, Jessica Chastain's a producer on it, mm-hmm. and not to knock anything, I think she really wanted to do this movie. So, I don't think if she was if she wasn't a producer, I don't know how uh, how likely the movie would have like been made. So I think she was like it was definitely a passion project for her. Usually, when we see like an actor 
who's a producer on it that's usually she he or she wants to kind of make it yeah and she did she did a great job I mean, oh yeah her she, accent was great yeah she cries a lot in this movie though i <laughs> i feel like i could have like a counter because i'm just you know every other scene i felt like her eyes are just watering up i'm like and here we go and like <laughs> and i will never dig her because she is one of the sweetest people mm-hmm. I, I absolutely met her a few years ago at, oh wow in, in Tur- toronto going into yeah. thing and and she's just very sweet and so i was like ah, always, we always root for her but i think here i think she did well with the accent mm-hmm. like i said mm-hmm. i think that yes she does have a lot of she carries the sorrow of the movie yeah. on her shoulders and through her eyes and it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily a young family friendly movie because there no. there are there are issues here and aftermath of um sexual assault yeah, that and is, uh animal cruelty. Yes. You yeah, know, a lot of groans in my audience when I saw it. Yeah. Um <clears throat> you know the massacre of animals yes. is kind of reflective of the massacre of the humanity yes. of the Jewish population. So that's where in this they're they're showing the the symbolism, you know, through the yep. animals are showing the death. They it seemed like they were painting the Nazis in the same paintbrush that their cruelty with animals was as equal to the the murder of humanity, you know, with the, with the Jewish population, and you know, without showing the chambers, I mean, there there are deep implications that you know, the the Jewish Holocaust and the um, the ghetto mm-hmm. was being liquidated. You knew that that was happening, and there were there were images that that come to you that are very visual of the aftermath of mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If you if you know the the Holocaust history, then You'll understand when it's not snowing. Yep. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I think I probably enjoyed this a little bit more than you guys. I mean, yeah. I, I was engaged with it. I, I get the thing too. Yeah, it was kind of a groan in some of the plot points, moving, mm-hmm. moving the story along. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. Me, I personally wouldn't recommend you to have to see this in theaters. You could probably wait for DVD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I. I I was engaged in the theater. I, again, I went to matinee, and probably like you shared earlier, Ryan. Yes, the audience was ten, tending older than me, and I'm mm-hmm. older than you. So. <laughs> Mine was odd because I went at like eleven something, and like it was still a crowded theater. Yeah. It was like I was like, wow, everyone's just flocking to this, movie, which is good. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 good to see that they're pulling the the audience. So. Anything else for no. our Zookeeper's Wife? I, think that's I feel like we covered everything. All right. <clears throat> so, Ryan, you've got Ghost in the Shell. All right. In the not-so-distant future, a young cybernetic soldier must chase after a mysterious hacker who is taking out the technology around the city. While in her search, she slowly discovers information about her past. Ghost in the Shell is directed by Rupert Sanders, Scar- stars Scarlett Johansson, Michael Pitt, and Beat Takeshi. So what you guys think about Ghost in the Shell? I also mentioned Ghost in the Shell is an adaptation of the anime from 1997, I believe. Looks kind of slick. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a very some, beautiful movie. Get some interesting action. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably it. Yeah, story... <clears throat> story has left me lacking here. Not knowing... Other than knowing it was derived from an anime so knowing that it would probably have some aspects of it i went into this cold and kind of left me cold i mean uh, ryan we saw it a couple weeks back yeah just so that we can get an idea of what it was like and they changed they changed a lot they changed the the opening plot is the same the ending conclusion and so the major plot point, like I mentioned, the summary is the same as the original anime. Um, they instead give um, Major, played by Scarlett Johansson, a backstory or a bigger backstory than she did in the anime. And I think they were trying to probably develop her more than she needed to be. And I think um, we start this with our friend Derek and um, we were talking afterwards and I Coming out of it, I definitely see the differences between an American-made action movie and a Japanese-made action movie because it 
the anime is very philosophical and it's very slow, but you definitely take in a lot more. There's a lot more symbolism. And since this is an action movie, I don't think as an American audience, <laughs> they want to go for symbolism. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, f- I feel like that the anime <clears throat> was very heavy on, you know, certain concepts about, you know, where the future could be with human and technology. Um, this this movie to me felt like it was trying to be both smart and an action movie, and it failed on both levels. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you've already got the concept that most people have a crooked neck because they're always looking at the phone, which is always a top attached to the palm of the yep. hand and of course the the Fitbit wrist slings mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things that get tattooed under your skin so we're moving closer to that yeah so yeah I think this takes a look at that um, tweak of humanity mm-hmm. you know because major <coughs> is fully, fully uh, yeah automated except yep. for her the brain inter- yeah her brain mm-hmm. and to give um, listeners kind of a an idea of what why the title comes from is which is very interesting because in the anime they don't explain what the title means you kind of just understand it while you're watching it but in the movie they explain it many times um, ghost is the brain and the shell is the cybernetic um, body um, of major but I found that that remind me of when the the last airbender came out and they kept on saying the word avatar over and over so the audience would understand it and i i don't know like it 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 fell to like this this kind of movie where it was like this amnesia story like you don't really know about your past you're the one i you're so unique i it just felt so contrived and cliched. I'm just like, yeah, it did not get me invested at all with what was happening. Yeah. I, th- yeah. I think there's only like a few action sequences I thought were cool. And they're the ones that they pulled from the actual anime that it was like, oh, this is from that part of the movie. Oh, that's, yep, yeah, that's it. I, I honestly think my favorite scene was the, the deep dive when like they're, yeah. they're looking at this, like they, you know, they, uh, they take this robot in they're like they're trying to, figure out its memories like how it could have gotten corrupted and so major hooks up to it's like well i'm going in doing this thing called the deep dive and i'm like well you know what the heck is that and it was really cool like visually i thought that was like the most interesting sequence of the bunch especially like like when it suddenly turns takes a dark turn it's like she's getting hacked quote unquote and it that was really cool and then everything else just kind of goes to the wayside yeah like and i understand like it does look like the movie does look cool at points, though I will say I felt like when I was leaving, like they kept like throwing CGI on buildings just to make it look futuristic. Like it was trying too hard to be Blade Runner. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, you brought up a lot of points. I'm like, I'm yeah. sitting here, John. I'm like writing notes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah the the CGI over the buildings served both as kind of that cool Blade Runner esque effect, but then you see. The marketing. Yep. There are some blatant companies Honda. That, would, <laughs> that, you know, you know, have probably product placement. Mm-hmm. And the movie that we're currently talking about is Ghost in the Shell, currently in theaters. John, Ryan, and Don here with Cinema Hits and Misses. Here for another 10 minutes at 780-4909. That's 780-4909. And the plugging in part with Major. That reminded me so much of Neo in, in the, the Matrix. Matrix. Well, I mean, the Wachowskis did say that Ghost in the Shell so they was were, a major yeah, inspiration yeah. for the Matrix. No pun intended. So, so, you know, it's it's funny how, like, you know, it's like that the anime itself was inspirational for, you know, this for the Matrix, which was huge. But now when it's trying to come back into the fold as a live action film, okay. it just, yeah, it seems, yeah. Con- it just seems cliche at this point. Yeah, and off air, we were chatting with Daddy G and explaining the movie and the star. And a few years ago, Scarlett Johansson started a movie called Lucy. Mm-hmm which was the evolution of human via chemicals. And I think that was a, a more successful transition for this type of character. Yeah. In that the adv- the evolution of her internal processes until she turned into what she turned into. Mm-hmm. Don't want to give the spoilers <laughs> away for Lucy. But I think that was a, a more successful transition mm-hmm. than this. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still hung up about the outfit. Oh, the outfit, or the lack of, or oh, that's that. Oh, that that's actually the exact yeah. same thing yeah. as in the anime, mostly. So, what I will give this movie credit for was 
how much practical um, effects, even though there was all CGI, but how much practical like makeup and costuming. Mm-hmm. Um, the suit that you're talking about is yeah. her. Um, oh, I forget the name of it. It's it's what makes her invisible. Right. Um, that's all. I believe it's all silicone, so it's a lot like really. I saw a behind the scenes thing, so it was really cool to see. And then mm-hmm. the um, um, the geishas. That was all prosthetic. There's mm-hmm. a scene with um, robotic geishas, and it's all real, like, plastic, hard plastic on the actresses. So I'll definitely give this credit, this film credit for tr- making it all the real things as real as possible. Like, even Bato's eyes, which do look ridiculous, but that's what it looks like in the anime. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. In the anime, he just had them to begin with. Yeah. Whereas in the movie, they're just like, he, you know, he has regular human eyes, and then something happens in which he gets those those things. And I understand why they did that. It just doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. When it happens later on, you're kind of like, I don't know. But it, it, it's, it's, I know, it's a yeah. personal thing for yep. me because ju- I'll judge people who wear makeup and don't blend their jawline with their yep. Oh, I see it. So her oh, collar was a different If color. it's all the same material and yep. she can go invisible, then that neck seam, uh. it was so distracting to me <laughs> <laughs> because. If it's all the same material, yep. then it should flow. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it looked it looked cheap. Yep. Because it was two different materials, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay. Well, yeah. if it's not the same, if it's, you know, I get the concept. Yep. But it's like have that same, because yeah. a woman will notice when you like I said, <laughs> if you don't blend your, your makeup on your jawline, mm-hmm. then it's very noticeable. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and that's. And that's one of the stupid things that will take you out of people the movie. out of yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's just like that little hangnail. But yeah. you know, it's not a bad movie. No, I, I mean it has some good effects, but we've seen so much better, better, so yeah. many better stories. That this in itself, I'm like, Ugh, save your money. Yeah, I wouldn't even. I don't know if I'd rent it. I would I'd, go see the. An- I would watch the anime, but just to for like American audiences, it is. Not your run of again. It's not like the run of your middle action movie. It's very slow. There's actions thrown in through it. Like if you're not as used to this like type of movie, definitely compare it to The Matrix <clears throat> as well because it's a smart movie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's action oriented. Yeah, well. I, I I'd say just watch the anime instead. But yeah. just keep in mind that the anime itself is not a very plot heavy thing. It's, no, like the plot's almost in the background in comparison to what it is. It's more here. the the idea. Yeah, um, and then you know, there's another thing like when we, if we're going back to cliches for a second, fall into like the evil corporate guy is evil, and it drove me up the wall. Just like no, you, ha- I, I, I don't know. This this film bothered me a lot, and I, to me, it just felt almost unnecessary. Like I understood why, but you know, based on the box office results, which was 19 million, mind you, I feel like uh, the exact very low. Yeah. Very low. Yeah. Yes, that's low. I, I know that seems like a lot. <laughs> For a lot of us, man, that would be nice. But uh, yeah. I, I think executives just heavily overestimate like how popular you know anime is. I, yeah, because anime is definitely a lot more popular than when the original movie came out. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, with like the internet now, you can just watch like anything you want to watch. Um, but I yeah, I don't think I think the fans of the anime wouldn't go see this because they're like, this looks stupid. And people who don't watch the anime, they're like, this looks stupid. Well, you know, in the early press, that, <clears throat> the, you know, the whitewashing. Yeah. And, you know, all right, yes, I get that. Yep. But they also handle that well in the they story. Do, they, ver- they do that very well. It's very, they take care of that. Yes. Which, right or wrong, what have you, but mm-hmm. there's a reason And for even it. the director of the original one said, like, yeah, it's fine, because it's a robot. Yeah. So it could be anything. So the, yes, they do that. They were very smart in that, but not in the ed- execution of the rest of the movie. Right, yeah. which is the down- downside. I, I think again, I think there's a better movie here that mm. if you're talking about some of these social and technology issues, there are stronger points to be made than yep. they make here. Our friend yeah. Derek, who we went to, mentioned that um, the movie Ex Machina did this yes. so much better than um, Ghost in the Shell. That it's a smart movie about technology, um, and it's very well-made, very entertaining. Um, 
I would highly recommend seeing that instead of seeing Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, even things like uh, Stepford Wives or yep. RoboCop type movies. Yeah. Those are, I think, but uh, and of course for me it's always Blade Runner. Yep. And so I'm really looking forward to what they do with 2027. That's a 2029. 2029. Yep. 49. 49. Yeah. So, you know, that that one for me, this one here for me is a miss. And, you know, I I, I was excited for it. Yeah. I mean, you would have been the original audience. I would recommend this to, for most people, I'd be like, yeah, no, this is not your kind of thing. Yeah. There's no, there's no need. No. Yeah. So while we've got a quick minute here, there are a couple things coming up that you, our listeners, may be interested in. I know we're a movie show, but hey, WMPG has a 2017 fashion show on Sunday, April the 23rd at the Port City Music Hall. Tickets are available at portcitymusichall.com. And also one of the reasons I mention this is one of our friends of the show and a frequent guest, DJ Shane, is doing the music for this, and he spins some great tunes, so... That may be something of interest to you. And next week, there is a showing of George Mitchell, My Journey's End. It's going to be at the Maine Irish Heritage Center on Gray Street in Portland on April the 12th at 7 p.m. and 2 p.m. on the 14th, which is Good Friday. And basically, this is about the Good Friday Agreement where George Mitchell went to Northern Ireland in 1998 for the the peace agreement so it follows him going back with his son this was done a couple years ago via the bbc it's been around but if you hadn't had a chance to see this um you know you can have a chance to see it locally at the irish heritage center and you know it's be a movie a nice movie to see to see where peace can work Mm -hmm. because it follows not only George Mitchell and his son going back to Ireland, it follows some of the children that were born the same day as his son because his son was born within a day or two of this, this peace accord. So it's, it was really interesting. So I put that out there to you. Now we're going to have a quick change of schedule this month. Um, Gail and Terry are going to be here next week. We're going to swap weeks over with them. So then we'll be back here on the 20th with Ryan and John. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we can't tell you what's coming next week, but I know there's a couple of good movies coming oh, out. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to cover it. And anything else to add, guys? I think, oh, I think we're good. It, yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it up here in Cinema Hits and Misses. We're going to leave the airwaves warm for DJ Justine to take you through some Between the Notes. <laughs>